From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan's mistake. Black cats, 13, walking under ladders, spilling salt, knocking on wood. Maybe the list doesn't include your superstitions, but because people about us believe in these things, we sometimes think that maybe there's something to them. Tarzan had lived among the African natives for many, many years, and the voodoo and the jungle magic he had once scoffed at had become more and more a part of his own beliefs. Now he sat in the small windowless hut of Nadenga, sorceress of the Manobo tribe. Sitting cross-legged opposite the old woman, he watched her intently as she sprinkled secret powders into the kettle between them, began to sway rhythmically and utter a magical incantation. What do you see in the kettle, Nadenga? Nadenga, see nothing. But you must see something. I came hundreds of miles because you summoned me. You must see something there. You must tell me. Nadenga, try. Into cauldron, eagle's beak. Make the magic kettle speak. Eye of toad, wing of bat, fur of lion, tooth of cat, claw of panther, claw of mate. Tell us, tell us Tarzan's fate. Well, Nadenga? I see now. I see Tarzan and steam from magic cauldron. Yes. Jungle is no more. White men tear down trees, build roads, cross land with wagons that breathe fire. Railroads? White men kill blacks, destroy all in their path. Tarzan, go live in white man's city. But I wouldn't do that. There's no other place. Jungle gone. Black men who Tarzan's friends dead. Now I see Tarzan sick. He pale, dying, cannot live in city. So he too go to the land of spirits. But is there nothing I can do to change this, Nadenga? Tarzan must stop white men from destroy jungle. White men come now near village Manobo people. Near here? Tarzan must stop Tarmangani from build iron road for wagons that breathe fire. Tarzan must destroy tools. Supplies, white men, must kill. Come, Tarzan. Come into Hima. Me, Lokimo, chief Manobo people. Thank you, Lokimo. Uh, sit down. Eat meat with Lokimo. He, Tarzan's friend. I have no wish to eat now, my... My mind is greatly troubled. You speak to Lokimo what in mind and heart. Lokimo no thousand since he young boy. Lokimo, have you seen any white men near here lately? Nadi, oh. This morning see white men a few miles village. But I came here only this morning. I didn't see them. You come from Punya village? Yes. Ah, uh, then you come from north. White men south of village. Near Yukanya Mountain, Lokimo see only this morning. They make camp there. Did you tell Nadenga about seeing them? Mm, only Lokimo knew. Not tell anyone yet. But Nadenga knew all about their coming. Uh, Nadenga, great sorceress, know all. She says they intend to build a railroad near here. Not know. But these Tamangani, these white men, make big camp. Start build huts, stables for iron animals with great shields. Those with great teeth and those that crawl like Gimla, the crocodile. You mean bulldozers, steam shovels, and tractors? Well, I won't let them destroy my jungle, kill my friends, and drive me from my home. Uh, what do we do? We must smash their equipment, destroy their supplies... Frighten them so badly they will never want to return here. We must drive them from our jungle. (laughs) 
In just a moment, we shall learn what happens when Tarzan and the warriors of Manobo attack the camp of the white men. At the foot of the towering Yukonya Mountain, the camp of the white men had begun to form a well-organized pattern. They had arrived only this morning, but already much had been accomplished. Exhausted, most of the expedition had retired for the night, but in the tiny field office, two men studied blueprints by the flickering light of an oil lamp. Uh, can you turn the wick up a trifle more, Whitehead? There are a few things I'd like to recheck here. If you'll pardon my saying it, Mr. Halliday, I hmm? think it's time we turned in. We've all had a rough day. Yes, yes, I know, but I can't help worrying about the way we're going at this. Don't you honestly believe we'd been better off starting to lay tracks from Lagos and then... Don't you trust my judgment? Oh, well, yes. Yes, of course I do, Whitehead. According to your references, you're one of the finest engineers in the country, but... I still think we're making things tough for ourselves. Now, here, look. This mountain, for example. Mr. Halliday, I've been over surveys of every inch of ground between the tin mines and Lagos. And if we're going to build a railroad between the two, there's no way of avoiding that mountain. Yes, but the costs of making the cut through the mountain will be fantastic. If we run into rock deposits, it'll... Uh, it'll break me. Well, I'm willing to bank on my knowledge of geology, Mr. Halliday. The mountain's free of rock deposits, except for some shaly sandstone that we can cut through like butter. Well, I hope you're right, but I'd still feel a lot happier if we didn't have to start with the cut. It's our toughest problem, I admit that. Mm. But I like to take the toughest hurdles first. You won't be sorry you took my advice. Well, I'm banking heavily on you, Whitehead. My original plans go... What? What's that? Oh, I don't know. Well, let's get outside. Hurry. Something sure causing a devil of a racket. I can't imagine what's going on. Oh, no, no. Look. Savages. Hundreds of them. But they're, they're smashing our equipment. They're tearing our buildings down. They're ruining everything we've brought here. Better not get too close to them. I'll get our guns. But already the tide of destruction had swept over the camp of the white men. Buildings were smashed into kindling wood. Tractors and bulldozers and steam shovels were rendered useless. Valuable supplies were hacked and shredded beyond recognition. Halliday saw his life savings, his brave investment in Africa's future, fall before the savage onslaught of infuriated blacks led by a white savage in a leopard skin. Before Whitehead could return with a gun, the natives had finished their job and disappeared into the deep jungle. What was that? I... I don't know. Some victory cry of the natives or an animal in the distance doesn't matter. Nothing matters much now. now. This is a pretty tough break. One we couldn't look forward to. No. No, I suppose not. I feel badly for your sake as well as my own whitehead. And I... I may not be able to live up to that contract I made for your services. Oh, forget about it, Mr. Halliday. I won't try to hold you to the contract. Oh, thank you. Thank you, boy. I suppose we'll be heading back in the morning. Mm -hmm. No. No, we won't. I don't know what I'll be able to do, but I'm not giving up my dream of this railroad. If I have to, I'll build it rail by rail and tie by tie with my own hands. <laughs> What do you see in your magic kettle now, Nadenga? Heart of white men still strong. They not move camp, not leave jungle. They haven't left? But I thought surely that after we ruined their equipment, they would flee as fast as they could. White men still won't destroy jungle, drive black men from home. Well, they won't do it. If what we've done hasn't made them decide to leave our jungle, we shall take other measures. What Tarzan do? I don't know yet, but I'll make a plan. I'll leave you, Nadenga. I would have words with Lokimo, chief of the Manobo tribe. May spirit smile upon you, Tarzan, lord of jungle. May the spirit smile upon you, Nadenga, mighty sorceress. Lokimo! Lokimo! Jumbo, Tarzan. Jumbo. I was just coming to your Hima. Have your scouts returned from the Ukanya land yet? Eh, return just now. They tell that white men not leave their camp. Nadenga seemed to know that even before your messengers arrived here. She told me they hadn't left. Huh. Nadenga know all. 
What we do now, Tarzan? We shall wait until the full moon, which is but a few days off. Then, with the moonlight shining down upon the camp, we shall smash what is left of their equipment. We shall let them see our war masks and our arrows. And we shall brandish our knives and make war signs with our spears. It will be their last warning. Mr. Halliday? Yes, I'm Halliday. Well, I'm Captain Lawrence of the governmental police. Oh, I came here just as soon as your runner reached town. Well, thank you, Captain Lawrence. Uh, meet Mr. Whitehead, our chief engineer. Oh, I'm delighted to know you, Mr. Whitehead. By the sound of things, you haven't given up your construction work yet. Oh, eh? no. <laughs> things weren't quite as bad as we thought at first. So we had to send to Lagos for a great many replacement parts and repair materials. And I was forced to send a letter back to the bank asking for additional financing. But without further setbacks, we still have a chance of building our railroad. Well, I certainly wish you luck. And I'll try to find out something about the attack made on you. Uh, did you see any of the natives closely? Mm, no, no. We were some distance from them. You, mm. you couldn't describe any of their native tattooing then, their tribal marks? I'm afraid that's a blind trail, Captain Lawrence. We couldn't possibly identify any of them. All we can do is to repair our equipment, pray they won't attack again, and get to work. Now, wait, wait. There might be one clue, Captain Lawrence. Yes? Their leader was a white man. A white man? Mm. Well, that might explain a good deal. I understand the owners of the tin mines near Kuraka aren't anxious to have a railroad servicing their competitors. Well, this man was no tin mine operator. He was a savage. Yeah, I think he may have been the one who gave that unearthly cry as they disappeared. An unearthly cry? Hmm. No, it's not possible. It couldn't be. Well, what are you talking about, Captain? The cry. Did it sound like the victory cry of the bull ape? Uh, well, I've never heard a bull ape, but I rather imagine an ape might sound like that. Captain Lawrence, where are you going? Into the jungle to find Tarzan. Move quick, white man. I'm coming to your council fire with you. There's no need to push me. My noble people, not like white men who sneak into our village. I didn't sneak in. I walked right up to your sentry and asked him plainly whether he had seen Tarzan. It is important that I find him. Why do you want to see me, Captain Lawrence? Tarzan! Tarzan, it's good to see you again. I leave, Tarzan. Not want talk with white man. I shall join you in a moment. What do you want, Captain Lawrence? Well... It's not a very enthusiastic welcome for an old friend. Your lack of courtesy could be a shield to hide a guilty conscience. Why should I have a guilty conscience? Two nights ago, a savage attack was made upon the camp of a Mr. Halliday. It was an unwarranted attack that caused considerable damage. And it was led by a white man. The white man could have been you. It could have been. Tarzan, what's happened to you? You've always been against unreasonable attacks, wasteful destruction of materials... Injuries to a great and noble cause. A great cause? Do you think that tearing down the jungle to build cities where crime will flourish is a great cause? That depriving my black brothers of their homes is noble? Listen to me, Tarzan. Listen carefully. Charles Halliday is a friend to the black men. And he has invested every cent he has to build a railroad for their help. What do you mean? For many years, the owners of the tin mines near Kuraka have had a virtual monopoly. They've dictated the poor wages paid the miners. They've set the price to be paid at Lagos. And they've established the unbearable working conditions under which the blacks have long suffered. I know that well. But Halliday, because he is a great man, has hired engineers and has bought expensive equipment to run a railroad to other mines. Once the line goes through, if you permit it to go through, all of that will be changed. Is it possible? It's more than possible. It's a fact. When or if tin is delivered quickly to Lagos from these new mines, the mine owners of Caraca will no longer be able to pay starvation wages... They shall have to build clean houses for their workers. And they shall have to sell their product at a fair price. The future of Africa itself has been threatened by your savage attack on Halliday's camp. I have been away from civilization too long, Captain Lawrence. I've been swayed by the superstitions and the fears of the natives. I have made a mistake. You have made no mistake, Tarzan. Huh? Who's this? She's Nadenga, sorceress of the Manobo people. The one who influenced me to make the horrible mistake for which I must make amends at once. Good. I knew I could count on you, Tarzan. Tarzan, not make mistake. Words of Nadingo are true. White man's camp must be destroyed. In just
just a moment, the exciting conclusion of our story of Tarzan's mistake. Your curses and your threats will do no good, Nadenga. My mind is made up to help my white brothers. Men of Manobo not help. Yes, you've been successful in frightening them, so they will not undo their wrong, but at least they've promised not to attack the camp again. That bad promise. The dingo's magic heart that talks say Manobo should attack. Your magic heart that talks? I've never heard of that device. See? is new magic. Tell the dingo future. Look. Here. Oh, that isn't magic. It's a watch made by a white man. His magic heart. It is a small porcelain watch in the shape of a heart. Can't imagine where you got it, but I'm sure it's not magic. No, Captain Lawrence has opened my eyes, and I will not be misled again. Goodbye, Nadenga. Evil spirits haunt your sleep. Double trouble shall you reap. Poison be your meat and bread. Voodoo curses on your head. <laughs> Found him, huh? Yes, Mr. Halliday, this is Tarzan. Tarzan, this is Mr. Halliday. And Mr. Whitehead is chief engineer. Glad to know you, Tarzan. I'm afraid I can't add my salutation to Whitehead's, Tarzan. No amount of apologies will make up for what you've done. I don't blame you, Mr. Halliday, but I did not intend mere apologies to atone for my crime. Eh, well, we could use a man of your strength on the labor gang, but I have to have men here I can have faith in. If you'll pardon me, Mr. Halliday, I don't believe you're being fair. He's admitted freely that he was the one who led the raid. Let's give him a chance to make it up. I'll have to make this decision, Whitehead. Mr. Halliday, what damage that we did caused you the most inconvenience? The most serious damage, well, I'd hardly term it an inconvenience, was the hacking of the railroad ties. We may not be able to get more, even by the time we're ready for them. I bought the last they had in Lagos. I'm sure they'll come through, Mr. Halliday. And even if they don't, we can use local woods. I am not taking a chance on anything but the best time. Mr. Halliday, I know of woods in the jungle that are even harder and tougher than those we demolished. I shall make it my personal responsibility to fell the trees and fashion the ties you need. And I still have serious doubts about you, Tarzan, but... Well, if you can make good on that promise, I'll be willing to concede that I'm wrong about you. <laughs> Well, Mr. Halliday, how did the work go today? Uh, Well, not too well, Captain Lawrence. We ran into granite deposits. Oh? Yes. Whitehead was certain there was nothing but shale there. But I I, I just can't understand how he made such a mistake. Well, I guess we're all entitled to one mistake. Even Tarzan, who's made few in his lifetime, made one when he led the attack against you. Yes, and you made one when you didn't arrest him after you'd found him. There's no sign of him or the railroad ties he's promised. Uh, Oh, what's that? Another attack! I was right in not trusting that white savage. Your stations, men! Your stations! Ready? Aim! Fire! They're on the run. Yes, yes, they're giving up. They're retreating into the jungle, all right. Well, we've killed half a dozen of them. Yes, we have. But look, three of our men on the ground with arrows through their hearts. Your Tarzan and his promises. But he didn't lead this attack. And I'll swear on my honor he had nothing to do with it. Hell, if Tarzan wasn't responsible for the attack, at least he has no intention of helping us. For all we know, he's hundreds of miles from here by this time. In one conclusion, Mr. Halliday was 100% correct. Tarzan was hundreds of miles away. At the very moment, he was walking down the rubble-strewn main street of Kuraka, center of the great tin monopoly. He passed the wretched shacks of the workmen, glanced at the sign over the headquarters of the largest of the mine owners, and then strolled into a small shop that sold trinkets and ornaments. Something in the store's window had caught his eye. May I help you? I noticed a heart-shaped watch in your window. Could you tell me its price? Uh, it's four pounds six. It's very fine porcelain. There's not another one like it to be had in all of Africa. Hmm. How can I be sure of that? Why, I myself purchased the watches in Switzerland and brought them here. 
There was only two of that particular design ever made. Good. I'd like two of them. Were I to return home with only one, it might cause jealousy. Uh, I, I'm very sorry, but I sold the other one some time ago. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'll have to think about buying just one. Perhaps I'll be back later. I have some business here in town right next door. I, I noticed the sign Weisskopf and Son as I came in. Uh, yes, it is the largest tin mining firm in the entire district. Do you happen to know if Mr. Weisskopf would be in at this hour? Uh, Mr. Weisskopf is a very old man. He goes home quite early. Oh, but I didn't say which Mr. Weisskopf. How about the son who's mentioned in the sign? The old man had hopes his son would enter the business when he erected the sign, but the lad had other ideas. Like taking up a profession instead of entering the business? Why are you questioning? And could the profession have been that of engineering? I don't know. What is this all about? And anyway? the other watch, was it to young Mr. Weisskopf that you sold it? That's none of your business. Perhaps not, but I have an inquisitive mind that insists on hearing the answers. <laughs> Well, Captain Lawrence, I guess you were wrong about Tarzan. But he then. couldn't have felled the trees and fashioned enough ties during two weeks. Perhaps in a few days... No, he'll... no, no, I'm sorry, Lawrence. But if Tarzan intended to keep his word, he would have brought some here by this time. We're ready for them now, and there aren't any to be had in Lagos either. Well, I wish I could make some suggestion. All I can do is to have my men continue to guard your work. At least there haven't been any further raids. <coughs> what was that? Uh, you spoke too soon, Lawrence. Look, hundreds of natives this time... This is the end of us. Like a tide of locusts, the warring blacks swarmed upon the camp. Captain Lawrence's small band fought valiantly. The workmen defended their equipment with picks and shovels as weapons, but they could not withstand the savage attack. And then suddenly from the thicket came a second band of natives led by Tarzan. They waded into the attacking horde. Caught between Tarzan's band and the men of Captain Lawrence, the attackers became confused and disheartened. Badly beaten within a matter of minutes, those who were left fled into the jungle depths. Tarzan, you saved us this time, but, but why are your men holding Whitehead? Let me go. You have no right to hold me prisoner. I'd like to know... Quiet, me. Mr. Whitehead, or I shall permit my men to kill you In now. In the name of heaven, Tarzan, what's this all about? When I left here, I went to my friends of the Punya tribe. Together, we began cutting down the trees and fashioning the railroad ties you needed, Mr. Halliday. Yes? But I was troubled by what had taken place here. Not your unfriendly attitude toward me, Mr. Halliday, for that was natural, but... By Mr. Whitehead's friendly reception, which was most unnatural. I merely wanted to... I to... left the cutting of the wood to the punyas, and I traveled to Caracas. You went to Caracas? And a sign there reminded me of the German language I once studied. I suddenly remembered that the German Weisskopf, translated into English, is Whitehead. Weiss... Weisskopf and son. Uh, the firm that's tried to block me at every turn. Oh, I can explain, Mr. Halliday. Yes, yes, I... and I suppose you can explain why you chose pure granite for me to cut through? My men will take care of Mr. Whitehead, alias Weisskopf. Martin, escort our friend back to Lagos for trial. No, I can explain. Come along. It's all a mistake. You see, he bribed a native sorceress with gifts of watches and other trinkets, and she stirred her people and me into opposing you. She shall receive jungle punishment. Well... I've changed my mind about you, Tarzan, but we still face problems. Perhaps I can help with some of them. The punyas who defeated the last of the natives Mr. White had recruited will return and get the ties we dropped when we heard of this latest attack. Wait, you've brought them. And I can also show you an old elephant trail that will make it unnecessary for you to cut through the balance of the Yukanya Mountain. So there is an easy way? There is no easy way to cross any part of Africa, but it should be easier than making the cut. The men of Punya and I will help you build your railroad. And you will help me erase my great mistake. In just a moment, a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. In later years, Tarzan was destined to question whether his strange experiences in the mystic land ever really happened at all. And yet at the time they occurred, they seemed real. The buildings and the people and the strange acting animals appeared as genuine as those of his own jungle. But one can be sure of nothing except that death has small wings, which is the title of our next story of Tarzan. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.